Well, Mark, it's been quite a weekend for you that you wouldn't have expected. What finally made you wield the axe in the end? I know it's, you know, it's a little bit dramatic saying uh, wield the axe. It was a, a conversation with Kenny, both, you know, spoke about the last few weeks, um, what gave us probably the best chance of um, achieving at least the playoffs. And, um, you know, ultimately I came to the decision it was best if we made that change, but it wasn't a case of, of wielding the axe or or any, anything as dramatic as that. Um, as typical Kenny, gentleman to the end, very calm, considered, cared about the club, spoke about the future of the club and what a pleasure and a privilege it had been managing here. It he used the word honour, which um, is great. And, you know, he wished us good luck for the future and hope we do it and he'll be the first one celebrating. Yeah, it's never nice to do that to any manager, but... Kenny, or, or any person, Johnny, Johnny, you know, when you've worked with someone for four years, as closely as we have, and, you know, real pressure times and going to games and, and speaking before a game and speaking after a game and, and you're in that pressure situation, it, it, mm. it, it's never easy. And you know what, if it is easy to someone, they're, they're really not the right person to be involved with Portsmouth Football Club because that's not what we're about. What happens now tomorrow night against Peterborough? Who will take charge? No, Joe will take the game. Um, we've, we had a big discussion yesterday with the players um, after Kenny left and the backroom staff. And, um, yeah, we're going to take... Obviously, Joe knows the players. He knows the system. He's, he's got the year of the players. So, yeah, it'll be you know, a little bit more collective tomorrow with, with people involved, but g generally... But more, it will be Joe taking the team tomorrow night. And what other timelines from there? Are you looking for a quick appointment or could it go on till the summer? No, we, we want to make a quick appointment now. The big, obviously, we have to look at a variety of, of different options. What what managers are available now versus what managers are going to be available in the summer? Um, and do we just get someone to, to get us to the to the end of the season where we can dust ourselves down and, and go again and, and, you know, start afresh? So there's a lot to look at. Um and but a lot depends on the managers that are out there at the moment, what their demands are, not just financially, but in regard to the contracts and the conditions. Managers that, as I say, might be at other clubs at the moment, but have said they can't leave at the moment, but they would love to come in the summer. Um, so there's a lot to look at. And as you know, we are long term thinkers here. We're not knee jerk reactionary in, in what we do. So it, maybe it could be the, the way to get a caretaker to the end of the season. You know, give us that, someone that comes in, gives us that fresh impetus and, and we sit down with that person or if it hasn't worked out, someone else in, in the summer for a more long-term solution. All sorts of names have obviously been bandied about. Are they pure fiction at this moment in time? No, there's a, there's a lot of names out there that have been bandied around that, um, you know, I have spoken to, have been in touch, as, as you'd expect. Um, some, some great candidates, a lot of interest, as you'd expect from a... A club like Portsmouth and, and how we have built our reputation now over a number of years as a club that managers want to come to because they know they've got that stability. They know they've got that time that they will be given here to try and achieve, you know, the ultimate success. There's names like Frank, Frank Lampard and Eddie Howe. Are they pure la-la land? Um, yeah, I think, look, it's not, I can't name individuals, but, you know, a lot of players that have managed in, in the Premiership or even the Championship, the, the riches there compared to League One are just literally in, in, in a different world. Uh, let's not say we rule, would rule anyone out. We want the best candidates and we try and contact everyone we can, even if we can't, don't think there's a realistic chance of getting, we'll still try to do that. Um, but it is a, a gulf for, I mean, some of the wages the managers on on the Prem, for example, are bigger than our whole playing budget. As a chief executive, are you looking at the playoffs or are you still got an eye on automatics? No, I mean, when we had a chat with the players after Kenny left yesterday, it was, you know, Tom spoke and, and we said that, look, first thing is to, to really try and cement ourselves in the playoffs. But if you keep winning games, things can change very quickly and you, you can be breathing down the necks of those in the autos. Um, as we've seen before, you, you can be 10 points behind with five games to go and, and still do it. It just It's the weird world of football. So you, you never give up until mathematically it's impossible to not do that. 
you spent time obviously with the players yesterday. What is their reaction? Because they're always come out and say, well, we've got to do it for the gaffer that's gone. But what is their reaction to this? I mean, it, was, it was pretty somber, if I'm honest. Um, as I've said to you, and we've spoken, Johnny, um, a lot of us at the club, that, that there was you know, a lot of talk that Kenny had lost the proverbial dressing room. Um, he never had. Um, you know, it was a bit of soul searching amongst the players about them having to do more and they have to look at themselves in the mirror. And I think that's fair. I think um, it, it's a collective. Ultimately, the manager pays the price when results are, are not good enough. But he, he's just one part of a big jigsaw puzzle. And, um, you know, the other pieces of the, the jigsaw need to look at themselves and make sure that they're doing their job properly. At least putting the effort in and, you know, trying to give it the best go. And I, as we know, one of the, the reasons for making this decision wasn't necessarily lack of um, lack of effort or, or not trying. It, it, it started to come down to a lack of confidence. And I was hearing that more and more from the players, both you know publicly and, and privately. And I, I, don't, I don't know what we could have done different. It's, as I say, it's not a nice thing to do to have to relieve the manager of his role. But given the, um, the position that we was in at that particular point and the talk of confidence, it was the only logical thing that we could do. And the pressure was building to an extent. I think it was having a detrimental impact on the players. Because you've been a chief executive eight years now at Fratton Park. That's amazing, isn't it? You've become the longest serving one. Um, is that the hardest? You've got rid of a few managers. Is that the hardest job you've had to do so far? No, I mean, we haven't, um, I haven't had to have that conversation for six years thankfully um it's tough but and we've only i think it's three previously so it, it's still in in today's football world an amazing record to you know only have to do that three stroke four times in in what is over eight years now but it, it, it's never easy johnny none of them are easy because they're, they're human beings ultimately it is a job um but when you know, the, the managers that we've had, specifically Kenny, cared so much about the club and its future. But, you know, Guy was the same. Guy, you know, Andy, exactly the same. It, it's never easy. No. But you're looking for a at, at the end of the day, you know, I had a great deal of loyalty to Kenny, as you should do as a chief executive and manager. If you haven't got that loyalty, then it's never going to work. But my ultimate loyalty and responsibility is to Portsmouth Football Club, its fans and its board of directors. You get the feeling that Kenny will will be in football again, don't you? Hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah. And and listen, good luck to him. It wouldn't at all surprise me if he ended up at the Championship Club next. It's just mm. his record here is is amazing. He's fantastic. It, it's it's there with one of you know as one of the best statistically that that a manager has had at this club. So I think he'll get another job and a very good one. And you've got the feeling that the owners had a good relationship with Kenny, so they would have been sad to see this happen as well. Yeah, um, look, I, don't, I think we, as owners, gave Kenny every single chance possible. I'm sure that Kenny will say that. He was supported with the players he wanted to bring in, staff he wanted to bring in, you know, the way we tried to make him feel settled here and confident, because a lot, a lot of managers... They're very nervous and worried about every week. You know, it's, it's a lot of clubs. You lose a couple of games, you're immediately under pressure. We, we always try to give Kenny the comfort of, you know, ongoing support. I'm sure he will feel that. And, and really, the first time he didn't feel that support was probably yesterday morning when I, when I had that chat with him. New manager, but obviously same aims for Pompey. It's exactly the same aims. I mean, you know, for eight years here, it, it's never been to, to achieve a promotion is difficult. You've got, you know, 24 clubs in each division all want the same thing, all want promotion. So it's very easy to, to go out and go, we are getting promotion. You know, you can never guarantee it. All I've ever said is that year on year, we look to improve both on and off the pitch. Now, yeah. you know, if you look at Kenny's record the first year, it was eighth, the next year it was fifth, um, sorry, fourth. Then last year was COVID effect affected. So there was, it was called early, but I think um, on points per game, we, we were fifth. So it was a slight decline there, but it was, you know, to a degree mitigated because of, of COVID and we didn't get to really finish the season. And we was on a great run when the season was called to a halt. So 
naturally we didn't improve, but benefit of the doubt because of COVID. And then this year, you know, coming home from um, Wembley, you got that disappointed and you dropped to seventh. And it's just, do we see it out or do we really look to tr try something different to give us the best chance? Because it's clear that at this moment in time, it didn't look like we were going to have that improvement. And, and that was a lot of my thinking as well. Mark, we'll let you get on with it, mate. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank you.